Hello, everybody, and happy Friday. We have some exciting news that we're going to talk about today. Um, you may notice this little gem here, which we'll get into in a second. Um, quick reminder, if you guys have not subscribed to our channel yet, please hit subscribe. Uh, enable notifications. It's that little bell next to the subscribe button. And you'll be the first to know about Thea and when we launch our weekly videos. And be sure to like the video. Um, another point, uh, we have a email, yes. uh, email um, thread that is getting set up to be notified of Thea pre-order. So if you guys are interested in being the first one to know when Thea will become available, uh, click the link in the description and that will get you on your merry way to finding out all the things Thea and our FAQ section. We're, Enough of our we're still not sure exactly <coughs> what date it, the pre-order is going to go live. We're waiting on a couple of things to finalize. But as Mindy said, it is going to be first come, first serve, which is why we started that list. Yeah. Just so uh, everybody's got a fair shot at getting it in the first batch. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone wants to know when. Yeah, right? I know. <coughs> um, so we've talked a little bit about the obsession to detail in this build, right, with Thea. Um, it's been every single you know, facet of the detector from you know, the internal components that we're talking about to the exterior, which we've kept very secretive on purpose for a couple of yeah, couple this, reasons, yeah, this might be the first uh, the first bit of mechanical details that we've shared. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, I mean, other than a metal case. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, the idea of what the consumer is actually going to touch uh, when they're in the car. It's really important to me. Yeah, and uh, you can kind of see a little smattering here of um, what we're talking about. We are um, announcing that this will be the... Um, First detector since the V1. Valentine, yeah. yeah. That has had a knob for controls. Yeah. Oh. And it's, we went through a lot of, um, we put a lot of thought into making this decision. And when you're designing a, <coughs> a product that's as complicated as this, um, even from a mechanical perspective, you have to take into account a lot of things. How, what do people like to look at? What do they like to touch? What do they like to feel? What if it's mounted high? How do you control it? Think about every um, single radar detector in your fleet, even if, well, maybe you have one radar detector, maybe yeah. you have 10. What do you love about buttons or knobs or dials or, you know, your touch points with it? What are the things that you love and what are the things you hate? Well, and, and for me, I mean, like with the Pro-M, it was difficult to feel the buttons. I know that Escorts tried mounting buttons on the front <coughs> facing sometime, which could be a good solution, but that doesn't work for international drivers if you flip it. Mm -hmm. um, the more and more that we looked at it, we realized that um, we actually just didn't really like using buttons that much. In an automotive environment, it's important to be able to kind of look at something and, and feel without looking to make sure you have the right control surface. Yeah. And also, be able to do things quickly. If I want to raise volume on my Pro-M or an Escort unit, I hate trying to like put pressure downwards on yeah. two different buttons <coughs> or sideways and not always knowing if I'm hitting the right button. And think about like- and It's not fast. Like no. you have to either hold the button down or tap it 10 times as opposed to literally just picking up a knob and twisting. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Think about like, ah. ooh, our, our ceremonious little podium here. Um, <clears throat> what goes into the you know selection process for <clears throat> a knob? Because it seems like a very simple thing. Like, well, I just want a knob on yeah. the detector. That's what I think, right? Um, but the amount of like effort, thought, and time that has gone into this, you know, yeah, it's dumb. <laughs> it's totally not dumb. It's just I think well, like with everything in this detector, the amount of thought that goes into everything is just obscene. Well, and, and a lot of little things too, which we'll talk about. But on a, on a bigger level, um, part of the decision process was um, based on technical capability, which is half of it, and then simply um, feel and how it functions. And, and aesthetics. Even, even sure. Feel and sound, yeah. yeah. So, and I'm talking about specifically these guys first, and, and uh, obviously the knobs fit onto those. Now, a lot of you have used the Valentine one, and that uses a type of um, a control called a potentiometer. We call it a POT for short. And that is what is often used in um, high-end audio as volume controls. So yeah. if you have like a vintage piece of audio equipment yeah. and it has a knob on it, it's probably a analog potentiometer. Now, there are some companies that make really, really nice feeling potentiometers. Um, if you go to like high-end, again, high-end audio gear and turn that knob, it, sometimes it will feel like weighty, right? Yeah. It makes it feel high-end or expensive. Yeah. Um, Versus that, like a volume knob in my car, right, for my, my sound yeah. or my, my audio. Which is just like a cheap yeah. rotary encoder, basically. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the things that I really liked about potentiometers, is that you could purchase really 
high-end ones. But the downside to potentiometers is that they're analog. And for a detector like this, um, we wanted the ability to have a digital <coughs> control surface that still felt very nice. Um, the other thing that we needed was something that clicked. Um, not all uh, rotary encoders, which is what these are called, you can think of them kind of like digital potentiometers. It's not really the right thing to say, but for our intents and purposes, um, it's a digital control knob instead of an analog one. With something like this, if it can click, that makes men uh, navigating menus very easy. Yeah. Because you can just click to enter <coughs> and then scroll, uh, turn the knob and have the menu scroll by. It becomes a very fast method of interacting with the menu. Instead of having like forward and back buttons, you just turn the knob and then click to press, right? Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah. I think about the, the lag, right? Like in existing detectors, right? We've talked about the processing power Going and such. Going through the menu can take f a oh minute my. or 45 seconds on some of these detectors. It's, it's insane. It's brutal. And, you know, in full honesty, you go past, and at least with ours, right? You go past where you're looking to go. It's, and it's a huge pain. Yeah, that's awesome. So <clears throat> how many knobs or potentiometers um, did you guys go through in the R&D process? So we went through a lot. Um, we have just some of them here on display. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, we probably have, what, 20 or 25 of them here. But I know this sounds crazy, but we actually had a blind, uh, we did like blind uh, did rotary encoder testing. You can almost think of it like an NCAA tournament bracket where like I wrote down all of the, uh, the potentiometers or uh, the rotary encoders in a, bra <coughs> in a bracket. And then we blindfolded people and said, all right, I want you to turn this, rate, rate on like a 1 to 10 scale how it turns, mm -hmm. and then click it and rate how you like to click. And there's all kinds of things. Like these look similar, but uh, there's ones that have no clicks that are just totally smooth. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's clicky ones like this. If you decide to go with one that has detents or clicks, then you have to say, how many detents do you like? Do you like it to be really coarse, big steps, or do you like it to be really, really fine? So I was driving everybody in the office nuts, uh, like walking up to them with a blindfold and dumping these on the hey, desk. What do you think? Being like, yeah, here, here, Mindy, turn, turn all of these and rate them one to 10. Yeah, and it's funny, because it's like, it is, you know, some of them were, were like too difficult. I'm tr trying to picture, okay, I'm driving home exactly. milk, right? And, all of a sudden, I'm like, I need to change my dial. It's like, it's actually too much effort or not enough effort. Or, or the click, you're right. Yeah. If it's mounted on a windshield, mm -hmm. you don't want to have to have so much force that when you press in on the knob, the whole mount moves and the yeah. detector moves. Um, but you also don't want it to be too light because then every time you go to touch it, you're going to click it. Yeah. So it's really difficult to find one that feels high end, has a nice firm click, yeah. um, has the right amount of detents. Um, and then mechanically was right f in terms of mounting for our application. Yeah, you can see like the size of this, right? Okay, so look, I turn around <coughs> versus some of the other ones, you know, the from a um, cosmetic perspective, right? Like, yep. um, it's it's insane detail. Yeah, I mean, we d we did the same thing for knobs. I mean, we tried bigger knobs, um, we tried small knobs, aluminum, plastic, ceramic. Um, we ended up going with a smaller one that is made out of aluminum. It's, it's a pretty nice knob. It's got some knurling on it, um, some decorative detail up top. Uh, but it's something that you your hand's not going to slip even if it's wet because of that knurling. And it just feels nice, I think. Yeah, it's, I think you picked out the perfect knob. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so what, are fun what functions will this knob have? Is it going to be one knob does all the things? Pretty much. And that's one of the cool things about using AI and Thea in general. Um, because we don't need to do things like uh, K narrow or K wide or TS reject, like the whole concept of TS reject or filtering, we don't need to change any of those settings. Yeah. It allows for a pretty simplified user interface. We anticipate people will be muting this a lot less often. Yeah. Um, so one knob uh, with a combination of just basically scrolling, short presses and long presses can handle all of the functionality on the detector. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, one thing we've talked about a little bit uh, with uh, the USB-C power, um, going into the um, cigarette lighter or where it's being mm -hmm. powered from, <clears throat> will that have, um, for accessibility reasons, what functions would that, would that would we be able to have a mute button on yes. the power cord? So some people have been surprised that we need a mute button because they say, if you never falls to BSMs, why do you need a mute? But there are times when I actually want to mute a real police officer. Like yeah. if I'm on a conference call yeah. and I'm talking to somebody and there's a K band alert behind me, 
Yeah. I know he's there. The detector alerted me, but I just want to mute it because I'm focusing on the call instead of a, uh, you know, speeding at that time. Especially to think <coughs> about, right? I know we're not going to touch on range today, but the uh, the range that this detector is going to have. Right. I mean, you, you might want to mute him from a lot farther away. Yeah. You know, even just the other night uh, with my sister in Florida rocking the, the Pro M, you know, solid detector, right? And I had probably two miles that I was picking up KA. Um, which is awesome in a city environment. Um, yeah, but you don't need to know about it continually yeah. for the whole well, She and I are trying mile. to carry on a conversation <laughs> and it's, you know, yapping away in the background. It's like, you know, it's nice to be able to have that, that mute uh, function nearby. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with our choices of uh, using a knob instead of uh, buttons. It helps us from a mechanical perspective, keep the product a little bit thinner. And I just think it's nicer to use and easier to use. What I'm excited about um, doing, we've already, we already kind of started developing this, is prototyping um, and, and user interface testing um, on the computer. So when we build this software, we have a knob plugged into the computer that we can actually test and rotate and see it scroll. There's never been a detector with, a, with like a high resolution screen that used a knob. Uh, so this way of interfacing with things, which is common in a lot of stuff, I mean, yeah. like BMW iDrive works th that same way, or uh, a lot <coughs> of electronics do. No one's ever done that in a radar detector before. Um, so it's been fun to play with, and it's been fun to see how easy to use the interfaces compared to the buttons that we're used to on the Pro-M. You guys have thought of it all. All right, well, that's it from us today. Again, if you haven't hit subscribe, please do so to enable notifications. Um, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoy the knob. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Get that. And I'm all like. <laughs> we have a steering wheel. Go ahead. I'm going. Relax. Not all of us are as good as you. So much. You can't use my same one. <clears throat> you can't do that. Is that what you said last yeah. week? Happy Friday to the wonderful folks of the global. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>